All right, I leveled up my intelligence, I think. Oh, What's up guys, welcome back. Today, a few of you have asked for this and now my wife has asked for it as well. Let's build a Murphy bed, but let's spice it up a little bit. Let's turn it into a complete office remodel and let's try to complete that before the new baby comes in about a month. Let's get started. All right, now to start this project, we're gonna rip all of our sheeted goods into uh, not three quarter inch strips. What am I saying? We're gonna rip all of our sheeted goods down to the right width. It would be a giant waste of plywood if we ripped everything down to three quarters of an inch. Then we'd just have to throw it away or spend a year gluing everything back together. So anyways, we're gonna rip everything down to the right width so that way everything is manageable in our shop. And then we will follow the build plans that come actually with the hardware that I ordered. Now I used three sheets of three quarter inch Baltic birch, except for on any visible components. So headboard, side rails, foot rail, head rail is all gonna be solid wood. And for that, I chose to go with maple. So here I am cutting my maple down to manageable sizes. This is rough length, this, is, this isn't final length. I still have some cleaning up to do on these boards. However, I did feel like I could make this a tad more appealing if I used a solid wood instead of just plywood for everything. Nobody wants to see plywood for everything. It's rough length. Get off my back. For those of you wondering why I don't use the slide and I'm flipping this over, it's because I think one of these is dented because anytime I slide out, it veers significantly off to one side. I can't remember which side it is, but I just don't use it. I know it sucks, but life goes on. This was the first project that I ever really got to put together where I had the build plans before I actually started the build. Usually I'll 3D design something and I'll have the ability to make my plans, but I know that I'm gonna end up making a few changes here and there throughout the project, so I won't actually finalize because it does take time to build the plans. But this, the plans came with the actual hardware that I ordered, and so I was really just cutting and checking boxes off of a list, going back to cutting, keep checking boxes off, and it kept me really organized. And I think I'm gonna start doing this as much as I can manage. Preferably, I would do this every single time um, because it just helped my workflow tremendously. Okay, so at this point we have everything that we need cut down to width and the size. So we're gonna move on to sanding the hardwood pieces and making sure all the burn marks are gone and applying finish because everything besides the hardwood parts are gonna be painted. So let's prep those pieces and then we can, I think, just pretty much start assembling. Let's get started. With that, day one was complete and it was on to day two. Day two was mostly spent sanding everything down, but I'm not gonna make you sit there and watch me sand for a day. We're gonna skip ahead to the part where I actually figure out a way to mount the side rails to the bottom of the face, which is where the mattress is gonna actually sit on. This is another part where I actually strayed away from the actual build plans. Uh, here I'm rip I ripped down some pieces of pine that I have left over and I'm just marking where they're gonna go. I'm gonna glue and I'm gonna brad nail them into position. This is gonna be the inside 
bottom of each rail. So both of the sides, the front and the back, they're all gonna get these and this gives me a place to sink some screws into the inside of the face. As you can see, I also added a slight angle to the inside of each corner. That way when I'm slotting my mattress in, it doesn't catch on the bottom and potentially tear the bottom of my mattress open. Before we moved on to adding any kind of finish to the hardwood parts, I wanted to soften down those edges. Um, if there's one thing I've learned from having children, it's anything that I build, somebody will find their way to hit their head on it. And the less sharp corners to crack your head open, the better. This will at least protect them slightly and it adds a nice finished look. When it came time to add finish to all of the hardwood pieces, I kept it real easy. I added um, a healthy amount of Danish oil and then I let that soak in. I added a second coat, let that soak in again. And then I actually went over it with a mostly beeswax mixture that uh, I make. This just gives it a little bit of an extra shine, um, but keeps it natural. So that way I could move it into the house relatively soon. This also makes it potentially food safe. You guys have kids? Mine will literally lick furniture or the walls or anything. Anyways, next it was time to add these little brackets here. These will hold the headboard onto the actual inside of the uh, Murphy bed frame. And then I wanted to pre-drill all holes before I actually got into the room where I'm going to assemble everything as well as I needed to drill any holes for any hardware components. These are bigger holes for the legs, and then there were other holes that I needed to drill to bolt the actual uh, hardware onto on the inside. And so I made sure all of that stuff was pre-drilled before I dragged it inside. I want to create the least mess possible once we actually get into the house. Any knot holes that I came across, I just used five minute epoxy with a little bit of black pigment mixed in there. I think that this brings out the imperfections of the wood and it makes it look quite nice once it's all finished and sanded down. With everything sanded, dummy proof, and finished, it was time to drag everything inside and I started by putting the face together first. So I put the face together, just the panel in general, and I used, of course, my stiffeners to do that, uh, as well as a little bit of glue underneath each stiffener and just a ton of screws. This uh, would allow me to stand my face up and just shove it against a wall. That way I can put the actual body of the murky bed together and then we'll lay this back down later, add the side rails, the head rail, the foot rail, and then get it attached at the end. Now to hold this whole thing together, we're just gonna keep using these little brackets. These are the same brackets I used on the headboard, but this will connect all of the sides to each other, and then it'll connect the entire thing to the wall. Of course, for those brackets, they'll be a little bit bigger, but that's okay. This will mean that if I ever needed to remove the Murphy bed, if I needed to upgrade it, if I needed to downgrade it, this is really easy to do. Everything just unscrews. There's no wood glue holding anything together. I might add a couple extra screws in through the sides of the boards just for good measure, but uh, I honestly don't feel like I would need to. And this would be really easy to knock down and potentially take with me if I wanted to move or I could leave the whole thing, doesn't really matter. I have the option now.
Now in the plans that are included, it does give you the option to not have to cut the baseboard out. Um, I don't, I'm gonna redo this whole wall. So I'm gonna tear the baseboard out. I don't really care. I'll tear it out at this section first and then I'll do the rest later. But uh, I don't know, maybe it was just a part of me wanted to be a bit destructive. Remember how I wanted to not make any mess inside of the house? Well, I forgot to drill the holes for the actual hardware into the frame. So here I am marking exactly where my holes need to be. And then of course I will drill with my drill bit. That is how you drill. And I will make some holes. I'll make a little bit of dust, but I, at least we kept it mostly to a minimum. With all of my holes drilled, it was time to stand this thing back up and get the hardware attached to the inside. Now this was easy, you just shove the bolts in and then align all of the holes. It fits, sits in there perfectly and then just tighten everything down. I did have to find some studs along this wall so I can connect the frame to it. Um, this was as easy as running a magnet across. That should give me the center of a stud because that gives me a screw location and I hope that my drywall screws are centered in my studs. And then I'll measure 16 inches off of that. I'll confirm with another move of the magnet. And there you go. Sometimes you don't need big fancy tools. Sometimes you just need a simple household item. Those are the brackets that I attached to the studs. I could not take you up there with me because this was 80 inches up and my ceilings aren't very high. And so I didn't have anywhere to put the camera. Next, it was time to attach my side rails, my head rail and my foot rail all to the inside of the face. Uh, this is gonna add a little bit more support and strength to the face itself. Um, however, I did go slightly rogue here and uh, it wanted me to just screw in through the sides, but I still had a couple of these little brackets left over. So I'm gonna use these brackets to attach. Um, that's one of the good things about them sending extras is now I don't have to look at screws from the outside. Instead, uh, it'll just look nice and clean. Once I had all of my quarter brackets attached and I made sure everything was nice and square, it was time to start sinking some screws into these screw rails into the inside of the face. So this is gonna give it a little bit extra support. Um, and I'm right here I'm just sinking a couple in, making sure that my spacing is perfect first and then I will rapid fire just shoot all of them through. I will pre-drill because that nail strip is pine. And in my experience, pine almost always splits whenever it has the opportunity. Now I did pick up a couple of these. This is again against the plans, but I figured better safe than sorry. And I had to run to the store anyways, real quick. These were right there staring at me in the face. It was like they were calling to me just to be safe. I'm only $2, so I grabbed them. Better safe than sorry. All right, so real quick, now that we're done putting this thing all together, um, now the hardware comes with everything that you need, uh, except for screws, obviously the lumber, but it comes with like all of the angle brackets. It comes with a majority of the screws for all of that kind of stuff. Uh, it just doesn't come with the actual screws that you're gonna use on the wood pieces itself. Now it does have exactly how many screws you'll need as well as which kind of screws to get, however, when I was doing these, I didn't quite trust the plans. It wanted three quarter by three quarter, um, just pretty much a square dowel that was relatively small. And I didn't feel comfortable that I would be able to sneak my drill into that thin of a spot. Uh, so I opted to make these a little bit wider as well as a little bit thicker, um, just because I didn't really feel like milling them down and whatever. So I had to run to the big box store. And you'll, if you recall, 
I did mention that I broke two of my screws. I broke one up there and I broke one down here and it was just the tension of it, the screw snapped. Um, now those were zinc screws, just basic zinc wood screws. When I went back, I got these stainless steel deck screws that you guys have seen me use in all of my other builds. I've never had one of these snap on me. So I went with these, they drove much easier. Um, so if you're gonna be building this, I recommend getting stainless steel screws from the start because they are a little bit stronger. I added a metal plate here and metal plate here. Again, I do trust the plans. I know that they have been tested by the company that makes them. Um, but the mattress that I have that I'm gonna throw on here is a little bit heavier than any other mattress that I've ever owned. Um, it's one of the purple mattresses. And if you have one of those, then you know that those are a little bit more weighty. So I think that will just help. So now that we've got everything screwed together, this thing is, uh, when I move on it, of course, nothing's shifting. So this thing is pretty sturdy. We're gonna get this attached to the top and then I think we're done for today. Now these are the little feet that came with it. They just fold in and out, really easy to attach. And then these are the bolts that go into the uh, actual hardware to hold everything up and together. All right, final step for today. I have to lift this onto the, um, the legs that bring it down on the inside, the actual hardware. Um, and I'm alone. So you guys are gonna watch me do this on my own and let's hope I don't break anything, particularly this. So let's go. Uh, I guess I should start with this side. <laughs> I meant to see this side. That means I did it. All right, well, I guess that does it for this week. Um, Obviously, this is not a completed project yet. We still have to paint it. Uh, I'm gonna do something to cover up these seams, fix these little areas where the screws poked in that you probably can't even see. Uh, we're gonna fancy up the face. We're gonna add trim to the outside so that way this sits flush against the wall. We're gonna go all out as well as, this is a whole office remodel. I'm gonna do shelving up top just so that way we're utilizing that space. Um, and then we'll do on that side of the wall, maybe a small desk and then some storage up top as well. So we still have some work to do in here, um, but I feel pretty good about how far we got in a week. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave this like this because I still need to add handles. I have a feeling if I just put the legs up and then close it, um, it's gonna be gone forever and it's gonna be a pain in the butt to get back out. So. I'll leave it there. Uh, the link to the hardware that I used for this is down in the description below and it comes with a complete cut sheet as well as all of the screws and everything that you need. Um, anything that you have to buy, it tells you exactly how much you need and exactly what to buy. So, so I'll catch you guys next time. Uh, don't forget that in the next video, we're doing that giveaway for the table saw. Um, if you haven't watched the review, I'm gonna link it up in the corner right here. Go click on that and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.